sometimes we just need to revisit what we've done to our vehicle. Sometimes your circumstances change, sometimes your needs change, and sometimes where you are changes. So you might need to relook at what you've done. And I'm looking at that today. The main thing I'm looking at is my solar and I'm not happy with the solar. Yeah, you would have seen maybe the big panel I had up there originally, and I'm gonna put that back up there. It's in the shed, I'll go get that in a second. And that will go directly, you may remember I've got an Egon uh, Smart Hub here, or DC, Egon DC Hub, and all everything there in the 12 volt system runs to the Egon Hub. It gives you the ability to put two solar inputs into that, without making it too complicated. You don't need to match panels and stuff. I've got the Red Arc DC-DC charger in the back there and the solar panel on the roof goes to that. And that's what regulates. It actually goes through the DC hub, the Egon hub, then into the DC-DC controller, then to the battery. It's got another input on that uh, Egon DC hub for another solar input, but you need to have your own solar controller there. And this one here, this is the Victron uh, MPPT controller, 20 amp one with the Bluetooth. This here was sent to me by Roller Solar. These guys are up in Queensland. They've helped me out a few times with the build that I've got going on here. And these guys are just awesome. Absolutely stoked with what they do. So I spoke to David up there who runs that business and I explained my situation as to what I wanted. That was after the video I did where the solar panel was nearly coming off the roof. And I explained that I'm looking to put a, a, an external solar panel on. So he suggested the solar panels, which I'll show you in just a minute, because they are mint. Um, very, very happy with them. He sent this to me and I asked him to um, build some cables for me. And he built two cables. Uh, one of them uh, will go directly to the solar panel and one that then well, this will go directly to the solar panel and then into the vehicle with the Anderson plug. And this is like an extension cable, if you like, to go a bit further. I've got five meters and five meters, that'll give me 10 across everything. So what I've got to build, I'll draw it for you, show you. The way we're building this isn't really rocket science. The uh, Egon DC hub, or the Egon hub, let's just call it that for here, is the center of everything in my 12 volt system. Off of this here, you've got the DC-DC control, the Red Arc DC-DC, and the solar on the roof. This wiring here comes down into the Egon hub directly, and then back into this to charge it, then out to your batteries. All of this, all the fuses are in here. So we don't need to fuse any of this, it's already done here. Uh, so this wiring here is already there. You may have seen in other videos, this wiring is there still. I've just taken this off and tied this off. So all I've got to do is put the solar panel back up there, rewire it back in, and this is just going to work already. The external solar panel is different. There's another panel, another pin over here. I think it's P10. I'll check that when we open up the DC hub. And this, another wiring, will, another lot of wiring will come to here, to that Victron MPPT controller, and then out to the external solar. So what we've got to build is this, and that's it. That's really not that hard. This wiring here is that wiring loom that David from Roller Solar already made for me. So all I've got to do really is build this and mount this. Um, I was going to use a Renogy uh, MPPT controller, which I have already, but it's just too big for my application. It's more for RVs and stuff. So I asked David, um, to find one for me that's going to fit in my setup and the Victron one is the one he recommended, so that's the one I've got. So I've moved the DC, DC charger over a little bit. I'll put the solar controller up here next to it. So the ins and outs of what we saw on the diagram, basically this is P10 here. We can use um, this one here for a secondary solar input. These are the wires coming in from the, the DC, DC charger through here. So I don't need to fuse anything, it's all fused with the Egon hub. The Egon hub I think just generally makes it all look, well it's so much easier to install <clears throat> as well as um, so much neater. If you don't have a set of these, <laughs> get some. These when I first started doing anything with electronics, these were rare as hen's teeth and now they seem to be everywhere. These here save you so much time. 
in stripping out wiring. The other thing with the DC hub is you've got these little holes, I guess, in the in the metal here. They're for zip ties. So I'm just gonna throw this zip tie through. And what the zip ties are for is to tie up um, the wiring. So you can see these here are tied on with the zip ties. So if the wire was to get caught on something, it's not just gonna rip out of the terminal. It's going to pull on that zip tie and keep it in place, which really is pretty bloody clever, I think. That one's through, simple as that. I'll just put this wiring here in now. All right, that's installed now. That's actually, <laughs> it, was, it was simple, simple, simple to install. Um, now when you do install it, there's an app. This has got Bluetooth on it and that's how you would do all the settings if you wanted to change any of the settings. As I've opened it up here right now, it's got an update to do. I'll do that. Hopefully it's not too big. Basically it's saying don't leave the app while you're doing it. We'll just wait a second and we'll get that done. Well, there's the app and what it looks like. So when I plug, you can see there the voltage of the, I don't want to see this. Um, you can see the voltage of the battery at the moment. Um, all I've got running at the moment is some, just some of the center, the, um, the LEDs on some of the switches and the fridge is running at the moment. I wanted to run it down a little bit and see how it goes. So what I'll do now is I'll go and throw the solar panels in uh, actually, I've got to secure the Anderson plug first. I'll show you what I'm doing with that. And here, this is the um, outlet for the compressor. And I'm just going to have the solar sitting next to it, just a little bit behind it, right about there. I'll screw it down there. And the reason for that is that the window just here, I can crack it with just here. So whilst I'm camping, I can just run the lead that, I've, that these guys have made up, roller solar have made up. This, this lead here and I'll be able to run that lead through that window and plug it into there and that'll charge the batteries uh, whilst I'm at camp. Enough room there now that I can have this cable here plugged into this, run through there and still have all the doors closed up. There's plenty of room there to do just that. Just undo these. Tell you what, <laughs> this is a very neat cabling job. <laughs> Roller solar, bloody awesome job guys. Really awesome job. So I'll throw this in through the window here. And we'll plug that in. Now I'll show you this solar panel I've got. When I, um, when I did the video a little while ago about what was happening on top of the car with the solar panels, I asked you guys what solar panels you recommended. And there was lots of solar panels that you recommended, lots of brands. Um, but what I've got is Renogy solar panels. This is a, a Renogy 200 watt solar panel. It's pretty bloody neat. Tell you what, the sun has heat up <laughs> this afternoon. So it's in, it's in a nice zipper, zipper bag. And this thing is just built so neat. Just so very neat. Uh, I'll take these bits of styrofoam out. Don't know if I'll have to leave them in there while it's being transported. I'm really not sure. But on the back here, um, it's got the same sort of legs that you see on many uh, solar panels and these cables here. I can't remember what these are actually called, these type of cables. I'll, I'll write it down at the bottom here. But, um, I'll just set this out. They're the same legs that you see on many of them. I'll show you in a sec. Lay that out like that. First time I've done this, guys, it'll get better as I use it more. That's pretty obvious how that works. Now I'll get this plugged in. 
and it can go one way. That should be charging my solar now, let's have a look at the app. Actually first thing, the LED indicator on the unit tells me it's charging in bulk right now. It's connecting at the moment. It's charging at 21, 21 volts, probably going to get to 22 volts, 7 amps. At the moment you can see it there on the app, it works pretty bloody well that app. Bulk charging, 11 amp charging, right onto the battery I should say. Yeah that's good, I'm happy with that. The solar is 156 watts, it says here. It's a pretty clear day. But regardless, this thing is charging my batteries without anything else happening. And I'm happy with that. The thing was because I won't, I probably won't use that app that often to see what's happening. I generally just have a quick look at the back at my monitor here. And this is a Renergy monitor, which is why uh, I use a Renergy um, uh, inverter and a Renergy battery monitor, which is why when we looked at the, the solar panels, I was happy with the energy stuff, so let's stay with the energy stuff. Don't know if you can see out there, but just on this side of that battery, the arrow is pointing up, tells me that that battery is getting charged at the moment, which is fantastic. So that's a good solution for when I'm at camp, 